the ice that's hotter than the sun. There are a few things we laymen know about the world around us which we take as a given. We know that gravity makes things drop towards the ground. We know that birds always poop on a freshly waxed car. And we know that water turns into solid ice when it's cooled below freezing point. But is this last observation always true? Can ice be warm? Can ice be a liquid? Can you really build a hot snowman? Apparently so, as we're about to find out, as we investigate the ice that's hotter than the sun. The ice that's hotter than the sun. How can ice be hot? If you were to heat up an ice cube in a bowl, you'd be left with a delicious water soup, would you not? Yes, that's correct. And that's the end of this video. Bye bye everyone. Oh, and don't forget to check out our Patreon-only bonus clip, What Happens When You Heat Water Too Much Like a Big Idiot Guy. But be forewarned, for the answer is rather steamy. Wait, 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 wait hang on. We missed out on uh, an important detail. Ice does not have to be cold. It's true, and to explain why, Let's look at how ice is formed here on regular old Earth. If you paid attention in school for anything more than five minutes, you should know that each water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one water atom, hence the name H2. Oh my God, that's refreshing. When water molecules are sat in liquid form, it's because they possess more energy than they do when they're solid. Like a room full of hyperactive toddlers, the water molecules run around, bouncing off one another while they're pumped full of fun juice. Cool that water down just a little, and the molecules move a little slower. Cool it down towards freezing point, and they won't stop altogether, but they will slow down so much that they appear to be stuck in rigid form. Freezing point, the water molecules begin forming a solid hexagonal crystalline structure with the hydrogen atoms of one molecule bonding weakly with the top of the oxygen atoms of two other water molecules. This pattern takes up more space than the jumbled up arrangement of liquid water, since there's lots of empty space between the molecules, and this causes the water to expand as it forms ice. But in exchange for the restricted legroom, you do get to look at a bunch of delightfully pretty water crystals. You need about 275 individual water molecules to form the beginning of an ice crystal, and 475 to make a fully formed crystal of ice. The colder you freeze ice beyond 4 degrees Celsius, the less dense it becomes. And although ice can start to become more dense when you reach extreme temperatures, it still won't ever be as dense as it was in its liquid form, even if you squash it. Now, if we're still going to use that room full of toddlers analogy, Things become rather grim when we talk about crushing them all together. But when it comes to water, rigid molecular structures can actually form at much higher temperatures than usual given enough compression. There are 18 known solid crystalline forms of water, because the ice franchise has gotten a little out of hand lately. The acting in Ice 6 kind of sucked, but Ice 11 saw a reboot and things got a little more stable. The story in Ice 16 was pretty flimsy though. I think that's when they brought in Dwayne Johnson as a guest star. This diagram shows how the various different forms of ice can be made at varying temperatures and levels of force, with the latter measured in megapascals, which are the equivalent of one fat Frenchman sitting in your lap, uh, probably. Different levels of compressive force and temperature result in different crystalline structures and levels of density. If you were to subject ordinary water to a pressure of 1 to 2,000 megapascals, roughly 10 to 20,000 Earth atmospheres, you could make a piece of ice at ordinary room temperature, which is around 20 degrees Celsius. Add extra pressure and you can make that ice even hotter. And that's what a group of scientists did at Sandia National Laboratories back in 2007. They used something called a Z machine to compress water into boiling hot ice in nanoseconds. The Z machine uses electricity to create radiation and high magnetic pressures, and it once held the world record for the highest temperatures ever created on Earth, with a 2 billion Celsius reading taken back in 2006. That's hotter than the center of the sun. You know, where Jesus lives. The ice created by the Sandia national team was heated to around boiling point by the compression imparted on it. Earlier this year, 
Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory went a bit further as they announced the creation of the world's first piece of lab-made super-ionic ice. Their creation had a melting point just shy of the temperatures found on the surface of the sun. With their 4,726 Celsius reading comparing to the sun's external temperature of 5,505 Celsius. This incredible experiment began with the compression of water into cubic crystalline ice using diamond anvil cells to exert 2.5 gigapascals of pressure per square inch. The team then shock compressed and heated the water even further using lasers, the best tool for doing anything, to boost the pressure by a magnitude of 100. When the superionic ice was ready, the team had just a few nanoseconds to analyze it. When they did so, it was discovered that the ice they'd made was 60% denser than water at ambient room temperature, and it had briefly formed into something called superionic ice, which is an exotic state of water whereby it exists as a solid and a liquid at the same time. In this state, liquid-like hydrogen ions move within a solid lattice of oxygen. Water can behave like this when it's subjected to super high temperatures and pressures, and the LLNL team found that their particular form of superionic ice only started to melt at 5,000 Kelvin and 200 gigapascals of pressure. For comparison, that's a compressive force of 2 million Earth atmospheres and a temperature just 504 Celsius lower than the surface of the sun. But whoa, 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 hold on a minute there, voiceover guy. You said you were going to tell us about a kind of ice that's hotter than the sun. What gives, Bozo? Well, for a start, don't call me Bozo. Only my friends can use that name. The truth is that certain parts of the sun, such as sunspots, can be as cold as 4,000 degrees Celsius, so technically we weren't lying. And the LLNL researchers plan to increase the intensity of their experiments to try to create even hotter ice. Because when Satan returns to Earth, he'll need something to cool down his whiskey sour. And in a final also also, there may be planets out there in the cosmos where ice exists at even higher temperatures than the superionic ice made at LLNL. And also, 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 we're going to investigate these weird worlds in our bonus video, Hot Ice Planets, which you can watch over at patreon.com slash strange mysteries now. For a $2 monthly pledge, you'll gain access to this and over a hundred more bonus videos. And you'll also become part of the Strange Mysteries community, where we interact with fans to discuss the topics we want to make and you want to see. Your contributions have a huge impact on our ability to produce mind-bending videos which explore fascinating topics in more depth than ever before. And nowhere is this more evident than in our premium videos, exclusive to our $20 Patreons, where we consult with the scientific community to investigate cutting-edge research before the mainstream media catches on. Here's a trailer for our latest premium video entitled Chemicals of Reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. 
and in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strangemysteries.